if, if the Lord had never honored another vision that I had, and I've never done nothing in the world that's worth all of it, every toil and every goodbye to the family and every heartache I've went through and everything else, that's worth all of it. Right? The Lord. And they said it was a lady sitting in a wheelchair last night. It was called out of a wheelchair here. They had her talking about her on the phone, this, on the program this morning. And um, I wonder if she's back in the building tonight. If the lady's here, uh, would you raise your hand, lady, if you're here? There she is, without the wheelchair. Let's say thanks be to God. God bless you, my dear sister, for obeying Jesus Christ. May his blessings always be with you is my prayer. Now, I hope that someday I can see both of you women talk with you and shake your hand. If I don't get to do it on this earth, I will in the one that's to come. When we sit down to the evergreen tree, troubles are all over. I want to be wonderful. Think of some night when life is finished. Jesus finally comes and we go to meet him in the air. And that great table is set a hundred thousand miles long. And around there, the old veterans of the the fields sitting around look across the table to each other see there my brother and sister sitting there we're just bound to shed a little tear once in a while when I reach across the table and take one another by the hand the tears of joy rolling down our cheeks then the king and his beauty will come out walk down along the table and wipe the tears away from our eyes let that be our motives and having meetings and gathering together and talking about him, let that be what we think of. To meet him that night. Look, friends, don't look at things right here. Look at the end. If I had to look at things right here in front of me, I'd be a discouraged person. But I never look here. I watch the end. Not long ago, one of my managers, Mr. Baxter, many of you know him, I suppose, he was quoting a little story that I always liked. They was all riding bicycles. He was a Canadian. And they would ride bicycles, and they got pretty good. If they could ride without holding the handlebars, so the Schwinn, Schwinn, I think that is, bicycle company, was going to give a prize to any boy in Vancouver that could ride a 12-inch plank 100 yards without falling off. Well, they all got up there to ride these bicycles, and they had a little sissy boy like around there. He's just kind of like we'd call... We rough fellows, you know, called Mama's Boy. And so uh, we knew he wouldn't ride it. So when they all got on, everyone fell off but this little sissy boy. And he rode out to the inn, got off, won the bicycle. So all the boys got around him and said, how did you do it? He said, fellows, I'll tell you what you did. Say, when you got on and they gave you a push and you started off, said, you was watching like this, trying to keep yourself on the board. So that's what made you get wiggly and nervous and fall off. He said, I never looked down there. Said, I watched the end and just kept my eyes on the end and rode study right to the end. <laughs> keep your eyes on the end. Jesus coming, what will it be then? No matter what people say about you now and how you're persecuted, for all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, being made fun of and mocked and so forth. But watch what it'll be at the end. That's what it'll pay off. Just hold steady and keep your eye on the end. That'll be good for you. The Lord bless you now. And I understand that a while ago, I think they took a love offering my boy told me for me. I didn't want that, friend. I didn't come here for that. God knows that. But it's been a long time since I've had a meeting. And my expenses at home run about $100 a day. And I'm probably way overdrawn in the bank. And I'll assure you this. I don't have capital to work on. I just work. And what I don't have, when I pay off my debts, if I have any left over, God in heaven knows it goes right to foreign missions for what my heart bleeds for. Wish I had a week to stay here and preach foreign missions for you and so forth to see how it's needy. The big churches and things we have here, and they have nothing and how the hundreds of thousands coming to Christ. But now, I'll assure you this, that every penny of money will be reverently taken care of. What I don't have to have for my wife and with my boy here makes four children to take care of. And I have to have strictly for the work of the Lord, I'll put it to a good use. It'll never go to any bad use. It'll go for the gospel's sake. And at the end, it'll be you. It'll be maybe, maybe put stones in your home and glory is my prayer now these handkerchiefs here we pray for them now I'm going to say this 
Now, I don't have any programs to support you. Here are so many brothers, or it's got big radio programs internationally and things. They have to have a lot of money to support their program. So they say, write to us. I know that's to get your address. But you don't, it's, I have a hard time keeping my letters answered to send prayer calls and things. It's not for your address, no. And if you want a prayer call and don't have one, that I've prayed over to keep at your house. You just write me at Jeffersonville, Indiana, and one will be sent to you absolutely free. Anything that we can do. And you'll not be done or bill because we don't do that. We just, I just have enough to answer my letters. I don't have any programs to support or anything, so I, I, I don't need the money. That's right. Just, it's just to help you. That's all I'm doing it for. And the brothers has got programs while you help support them. Now, be, while we pray for these handkerchiefs, shall we bow our heads just a moment? Our kind Heavenly Father, we have come tonight at the closing of this lovely little service here in Shawana among these brothers and sisters who we've learned in these three days to love with fervent love. And sitting here tonight, actually hearing the broadcast this morning, hearing the tape played back of a woman at the great famous clinic turned down to die. But then Jesus came along. Just in time. Here she sits tonight, healthy, lovely. Oh, we're so happy for that. We know all of her people are happy for that. We're so glad. That I'm glad to get to even see her, Father. And the little lady back here who was sitting in a wheelchair last night, sitting up here, and tonight, way back in the audience, humbly, raised up to give praise to God as a testimony. God, thank you for these things. Many others, Father, that thou hast healed. We're so happy for them. Many cannot be here. They're on beds of affliction. And here's handkerchiefs that represent them. God, will you go with these handkerchiefs? As I lay hands upon them, knowing that in the Bible it was written that they taken off the body of St. Paul, handkerchiefs and aprons. And Father, you're the still the same Lord Jesus tonight that healed the sick. And I pray that you will grant it. Healing to everyone. Bless these people all together. And Father, we pray now that you will help us as we read your word for a few minutes and speak. And then pour out your spirit, Lord, tonight. And may there not be a feeble person left in our midst tonight. May those who are feeble now, upon hearing the word warming down through the audience, and just go by... And as each one is like blind Fanny Crosby saying, Pass me, my old gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while others are calling, do not pass me by. May everyone receive a divine touch from his hand tonight and be healed. And if there be any here, Father, who is not your children, may they see you tonight in operation and action and reality. And may you speak at their heart. And may they say, I'm tired of sinful life knowing that I got to leave the world someday, and may they come to find you as their dear, beloved Savior this night. We pray in Jesus' name, thy beloved child. Amen. Now, I know there's some standing around, and I, I feel for them it has to stand, and I know what it means, but now I'm... I'm happy that you're here and we just have it's a room it's just a small auditorium and we just for three days and if God willing and you want me to someday I hope to come back to you to be stay longer to have a, a meeting here among you people here in Wisconsin around you're very nice and I love you and and I, I want to read just a portion of God's word for as I always say, my word is just a man's word, but his word is eternal and it's true. Heavens and earth will pass away, but his word will never fail. Now, I don't have, I don't have time and can't set a regular text because the reason I'm speaking is merely feeling this congregation. That's exactly what it's for. Feeling around till I know the anointing of the Spirit is catching into the people and I start the prayer line. And now... That's why I speak, and I don't carry my text. I just uh, talk a little on the scripture here and there and so forth. I have been the last few nights, 
But now in Chicago, the Lord willing, beginning tomorrow, I'm going down, if of God willing, to preach some for the, the church down there. You live in Chicago and it's not tending any of these other revivals now. If you're not tending these other revivals and live in Chicago and drop over to the Lean Tech Auditorium this coming week. They're having a convention in the city and I speak each night there. I'll we'll be very happy. If you've got some loved ones down there, you drop them a card and tell them to come over. Maybe they, if they're not saved, maybe the Lord would save them. If they're sick, maybe the Lord would heal them. And so we thank you. Now, in the book of St. Luke, the Gospel according to St. Luke, in the second chapter, just a little familiar scripture to read. I read beginning with the, the 25th verse. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was up on him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple and um, to, with the parent. They brought the child, uh, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. It's uh, Simeon and then... Uh, an old sage of the Bible, and if we'd take what we'd call a little text for context, would be um, uh, expectations. You know, usually people get what you expect, don't you? You take some people come to meetings and say, you know what, I don't believe in nothing like that. I'm just going down. I know there's nothing to it. Well, the devil will certainly show you something. You're expecting it. He'll show you something. Uh, it's not right. It's something at the, at the, just what you expected. But if you expect to go down to get good out of the meeting, God will show you something to you. So you usually get just what you expect. So let's have our expectations high tonight. I see some wheelchairs here tonight and a cot or two. And let's you and I build up our expectations that you're tomorrow going to be walking like the woman was that was in the wheelchair last night. And you that's on the cot, the stretcher tonight, perhaps a hopeless case. But so was this woman here on the stretcher in a hopeless case. And let's build our faith up tonight with great expectations that tomorrow we're going to be walking around here giving God praise like she is, you see. And you do the same here, sister. Now, your arthritis is nothing for God to heal. He can heal it, you know. He can make it well and he, he can do anything that he wants to, you see. Or anything that you'll let him do. Your faith has to let him do it. And I see you're mentally right, all of you here. But this poor little sister over here wasn't well, mentally right. She had such a pressure. She was conscious and unconscious and a pressure on the brain and everything wrong. Even to the famous male brothers could do nothing for her. But Jesus could. And, he, and her laying there in that condition, the sovereignty of God. I was asking about it today and asking my boy and him what position was the woman laying in. And I was looking forward and seeing the vision and told about she come from a place where there's a clinic and had great high towering place and so forth and she was laying back in the other side back that way towards the front of the altar laying around there and I and the Holy Spirit goes around to her and pulls her out and heals her and makes her well he's so lovely now just believe him tonight and he'll do you the same way for he's no respect of person he's respecting faith God only will honor faith. Even your salvation sometimes won't, won't atone for your healing. Not the merits of your salvation. You're not healed by that. You're healed by the merits of your faith. Amen. See, I've seen Christians come to the platform, renowned Christians, and fail to be healed, and see a prostitute walk on a platform and be healed instantly. See, because the Christian had been drugged to him many places and skeptic, kind of believing wonder if the days of miracles is past, and they'll go off missing it. And a poor old prostitute come to the platform knowing that she's guilty and condemned before God, and there give her heart to Christ to be healed instantly, with no, just walk away. So it's on the merits of your faith. Look in the times of Jesus, how the Pharisees and Sadducees, they walked by and doubted, and the street women and so forth of that day and, and so forth, and the beggars and things would be healed, where many of the others didn't get healed. See, it was on the merits of your faith. Now, we're going to speak a little tonight 
uh, about to be expecting what you can expect to receive. And let's have our expectations high. And now, in the, for the next few moments, I want to speak on that. Now, the first thing you want to think of, friend, is always the, the Word of God. As I said last night, the Word of God is a seed. And that seed planted in the right ground will produce anything that the seed represents. If there's a seed and it's wheat, if that wheat's germatized, and the right seed going into the right kind of ground will produce wheat. Corn will produce corn. Barley will produce barley. And every divine promise of God will produce just exactly what it promised to produce if it's put in the right kind of a place. As I said today to a friend, it's the atmosphere. That's what it is. You want to, if you want to get a great healing service here tonight, let's have a great atmosphere of belief, believing you're going to be healed. Amen. See? Now, no matter how real Jesus would be here at the platform or out there, he couldn't heal you unless the atmosphere is right for your healing. See? Now, look, when Jesus went into his own country, many mighty works he could not do because of their unbelief. Is right, unbelief. No matter how great he was, he was... Jehovah God invested in a body of flesh. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, but he could not move until faith come. As how many knows Brother Bosworth? I know you all do. He's quite a fellow for jokes, and not bad, good jokes. But it not, I mean what the world calls, the American people are a whole lot that way. They're looking for entertainment. That's the reason today our churches has got so much off of the line is because they got a whole lot of Hollywood evangelism. That's right. A whole lot of glamour boys out acting and going through a lot of going on and trying to decorate up and put on a lot of psychology when I'm the one type that likes the old-fashioned blood-washed gospel. It really brings the gospel out. That's right. I do not believe that we should go on with a lot of carrying on and classic and everything. Just make the gospel pure and plain and simple. You don't have to speak big words that Webster don't even know. The only thing you have to do is just preach the gospel plain and true. They'll understand it. At Fort Wayne recently, the, you all uh, to, takes this uh, We the People. They wrote up an article of, uh, the Lord did in my meeting up there for him of a little blind girl being healed. You assembly of God people that cannot your evangel and so forth. And um, so uh, that night we'd come from the platform, a little club-footed baby was made straight, and, uh, and a little blind girl received her sight, and so they'd put it in the evangel, and then we the people, it speaks on religions and so forth, it goes over the world and gets the events on things and writes it up. So um, I was back in behind the stage for my song that they sang for me. My old friend, Paul Rader, wrote it, Only Believe. And I was back there just thinking, when I heard it come through the microphone, think right in this same room, Paul wrote that song. He's gone on to glory long ago. And I, I was back there, and there was a man came back there who had more education, he had knowledge to know what to do with, I guess. And he said, Brother Branham, <clears throat> he said, your message was nice. He said, but oh, your grammar. I said, yes, sir, that's right. I said, I'm... I said, I know my grammar's awful. I said, I'm sorry about that. I said, I was raised in a family of ten, and I was the oldest, and my daddy died, and I had to take care of ten children. And my mother, I said, didn't get a chance to get an education. So that's no excuse now. I said, you're a man. I said, yeah, I know that's right. I said, but since the Lord, I had to work so hard to went in evangelism, I said, and then when... I started here. I said, uh, the people calling me from everywhere, I don't even get a chance. He said, oh, you could take a correspondent for it. I said, your grammar's so bad. I said, I know it's awful, brother. I said, I hate it, but I just can't help it. He said, you using those words, haint and his and taint. And I said, well, they seem to understand it pretty good. I said, well, he said, uh, well, he said, look, said one mistake you made, Brother Brandon, was horrible out there before an audience like that. Said you said people coming up to this pole pit. Said they and he said you should not say pole pit. I said, well, isn't that what it is? And I, he said, no. Said you, your congregation appreciates you more if you said pulpit, not pole pit. <laughs> I said, brother, you know what? I love you. <laughs> But I said, I tell you, them people don't care whether I say pulpit or pulpit. They want me to preach the gospel in the place and produce what I'm talking about. I said, that's exactly what they are. 
And they know I'm just an old sassafras <laughs> farmer anyhow, so I, I can't be nothing that I'm not. And so I just have to talk like that, so you excuse it like that. It's the only way I know. So, but I, one thing I do know, Jesus saved me, and I love him with all my heart, and he's promised me a home in glory, and I'm looking forward to it, and I won't take as many as I can telling this good news of what he did. Hallelujah. Now, and now you remember that you don't have to wait now for an evangelistic service or a person coming through praying for the sick. You have a right yourself. Remember, Gifts and callings are wonderful, but remember, here is the greatest thing that God gave the world outside of Jesus Christ, is the Bible. And do you know what? The Word of God will defeat the devil any place, anywhere, anytime, on his own ground. Did you know that? The Word of God alone. Jesus made it so simple until the, the, the weakest Christian could do it. Look when Jesus came on earth. He was the Son of God. Don't you believe that? Amen. He was conceived in the womb of Mary and was born to virgin birth. Almighty God overshadowed Mary and created the blood cell that brought forth the Son, Christ Jesus. And God tabernacled Himself, Jehovah, in that body, in His Son. The Father dwelt in the Son, being the tabernacle. And when He was here on earth, and He went in after He was... a uh, filled with the Spirit at the baptism of John. He went into the wilderness, was tempted 40 days, coming out. The devil met him. He was, of course, just the antitype of Moses. And he tempted Moses on his weak part. And Moses was his temper. He broke all the commandments and, and showed that the priesthood would be broken. But when Jesus, his weak part, he was hungry. He'd been fasting 40 days. And when he, Satan met him and said, If thou be the Son of God, uh, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus now with all the powers of God in him, yet he never used any of his powers. He brought it right down simple enough that the least of Christians or the weakest of Christians could use the same thing. He said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. He took him up on the top of the pinnacle of the temple and said, If you cast yourself down here, while well, uh, give the angels charge concerning me and so forth. Jesus said, It is written, the Father's word again. And they take him up on a mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, every one of them, and said, They're all mine. I'll do with them what I want to. You see why we have wars and everything. Who's the ruler of this world now? And he said, I'll give them all to you if you'll fall down and worship me. Jesus said, It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thy serve. And Jesus defeated Satan on the word of the Father. And you can do the same thing. No matter how bad he tempts you in saying it's not right, it says, Say, It is written. And the word of God will defeat Satan anywhere, no matter what it is. If you'll stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and say, It is written, God said so, that settles it. If God said so, it really makes it the truth. All the heavens and earth will fold up someday and be no more. But God's word is eternal and cannot fail because God has spoken it. And he, do you realize that the very earth that you're setting over tonight is nothing more than the word of God? Did you know God made the world out of his own spoken words? If he didn't, where did he get the material? He said, let there be, and it materialized and made a world. Let there be, and it was light. Let there be, and he believed his own word. And his own word brought the earth into creation. He made the world out of things which was not and does not appear. Yet he made the earth that you're setting over tonight. He made the chair that you're sitting on tonight. His spoken word brought the material into the earth. The word of God. Amen. Amen. You begin to think how little we are and how poor and, and, and how uh, uh, little it is to disbelieve God's word when the, everything that we see was made by his spoken word. He spoke it into existence. He spoke you into existence. He spoke me into existence. Oh, my, when we think of that, the little old doubts just drop away when we see who he is. Why, he held out his hands and broke the moon and stars into existence. What do you think of that? Who made the solar system. When standing out long ago looking through a uh, glass down there on Mount Palmer, I could see 120 million years of light space. Break that down into miles and see how far it would be. And beyond that was still moons and stars and worlds. 
And my Father spoke those into existence. Amen. The same one that sent his Son here to die, that you might believe his word. Amen. And you cannot believe his word correctly until you are born of the Spirit of God. Amen. That's deep and it's hard, but it's correct. What's the matter with the world today? we got too much intellectual religion. There is such a thing as having intellectual. I don't mean to be rude. I don't mean to hurt people's feelings. But the trouble with these evangelists today, it's crossing the nation today, uh, preaching the word. They say they go and have a big meeting and thousands are converting. Go back a few weeks and there's not hardly any of them left. What is it? They receive an intellectual faith. Now, God is not known by intellectual faith. God is known by the experience of new birth. Amen. Only alone. Jesus said, except a man be born again of the Spirit of God, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. Right. Now, any uh, Bible scholar here knows that the word see there does not mean look with your eye. It means understand. You, you say, I look at it, something they say, I just don't see it. You mean you don't understand it. You're looking right at it. You look with your eyes, but understand with your heart. That's right. You can't understand it. And no man can know nothing of God until first you're born of the Spirit of God. The Bible said no man can call Jesus Christ only by the Holy Spirit. It's the only thing that you say, well, I believe he's the Son of God. If you haven't been born again, you're taking somebody's word for it. You say, the Bible said so. That's right. The Bible's right. But what about you? You say, the preacher said so. The preacher's right. But what about you? Mother said so. Mother's right. But what about you? It's a personal experience of your own that you've got to be born again or you'll never understand God. And then he will reveal himself to you just as he knows you have need of. Now, there's two things in you that, that draws the opinion. First is an intellectual part, which is your mental part. And the next is your soul. You have a soul and a mind. And the, now here not long ago, the old timers and the science said, well, you know, God sure made a mistake when he said that you, as a man, thinketh in his heart. There's no mental faculties and uh, no mental faculties in the heart that a man can think with its flesh. And the critics re uh, said it was ridiculous to think that a man could think from his heart. About six months ago, you people in Chicago and around found out that God was right. The scientific search has found that in the human heart, there's a little teeny cell. It hasn't even got blood in it or anything. It's a little compartment. The animal doesn't have it, just the human being. And they say it's the occupation of the soul. So after all, a man believes in his heart. You think with your mind, but you believe with your heart. God's right, after all. It's in your heart. Now your intellectual faith will reason. You will say, now, I know the Bible teaches that, certainly. But let me think now. The days of miracles is past. Pastor said so. Somebody said so. I, I believe at this day we don't have that. Now, see, you're using intellectual faith. And that intellectual faith will reason with God's Word. But a born-again experience from the heart will not reason. It will say, God's Word's right. Amen. There's no more to do with it. It's right. Amen. Because something down here that says it itself, you have nothing to do with it. It's God in the heart. Now, an intellectual faith will reason. Now, today, that's what's the matter with our churches. We've got away from real old-time experiences of receiving the Holy Spirit. And we've got away from it and substituted for it an intellectual college, um, uh, a college education. Now, I have, I'm not trying to support my ignorance now. But I am trying to say this. If it come between education and salvation, I'll take salvation. Amen. Yes, sir. If my children didn't know their ABCs, I'd rather they know Jesus Christ. That's right. It's true. I think education's wonderful. But it'll go so far. But the trouble of it is they, we've leaned all together on education and have adopted it instead of salvation. We don't need today. And you know what's happened? We substituted then the old-fashioned upper room to receive the Holy Spirit for a supper room yeah. to sell soups and things to pay the preacher with. Yeah. Well, we don't need that. We need back to the Bible, to the old-fashioned yeah. Holy Spirit, a good old time St. Paul's revival and the Bible Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's what we need back in the church again tonight. It's right. And friend, it'll only come through the experience of the new birth. A man cannot go to the kingdom of God without being born again no more than a bird to fly without his wings. He couldn't do it. No matter how much bird he is, he hasn't got wings, he can't fly. 
And neither can a man go to heaven without being born again. Jesus said so. And we know that it is not intellectual. And you hear people today in their churches, they reason out, say, now I'll tell you, that's not right. Because, see, they doubt. And what your soul is, here an experience I had recently with a woman. There was a woman who lived in a neighborhood. She was raised up a good woman. And she was raised in a fine home, although she went to church, but she never become what we had known to be a Christian being born again. Though she was very loyal in the church, she was the pianist in the church. And she married a fine boy that hung around the church there. And he was a good boy. And they lived together for a while. After a while, they moved off into a neighborhood. She still joined up with taking her letter to another church. And she lived in this neighborhood here. She, be, she was raised of an old-fashioned mother who really knew God. An old-fashioned mother. God help us to have some more of them. Yeah. Instead of these cigarette-smoking, cocktail-drinking, night-running females that we got today call a mother. And I, it's awful to say that from the platform, but that's the naked truth. It's a shame, brother. I tell you, it's disgracefully to think that the motherhood of America has broken down. That's the backbone of any nation. The first preacher that ever gets a child is a mother. There's four or five gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and mother. And a mother should be a Spirit-filled woman who can teach her children and teach them to pray and to know about God and so forth. Instead of that, they give them to a babysitter and run all night long. And then go to Sunday school on Sunday morning and call themselves Christians. I better get off of that, hat now, Because I'm just the old sass-rass type that believes the truth about these things. That's right. And I'd rather scorch you now and have you be burnt after a while. So that, that's true. So you just remember it's the truth. It's the gospel truth. And how today that we've got away from that. It's that they go to the, the church. And this woman, she went into the church out there. She'd done a very good job. She was a piano player. And after a while, she began to notice the women in her neighborhood begin to dress immodestly, how they get out and mow their yards with them little old clothes on. I hope there's none of them here tonight. And um, it's a disgrace to you, sister. God, be merciful to your sinful soul. What else would do that but an evil spirit full of lust? You don't want to think that, but that's exactly the only person that ever stripped their clothes in the Bible was a maniac. That's right. Put on your clothes and act like a lady. Your husband ought to be whipped for letting you do it in the beginning. So then the first thing is, now, there, but she thought she'd go get by with that because the rest of the women in the church was doing the same thing. The, she thought she would do it. So she started to do it. That led on so they began to smoke cigarettes. So she thought she'd smoke cigarettes. And she continued playing. There was nothing said too much about it around the church. That's what's the matter, Pastor. What's the matter? A lot of people who go to hell is because you let down the gospel in the pulpit. That's exactly what it is. If you keep those little rosary things out of the pulpit and preach the gospel, the power of God and the salvation, have an old-fashioned altar call and have people cleaned up in their lives... It would be different. It would be examples set forth in Christianity. That's right. But we've let down the bar somewhere. A good old Methodist preacher friend of mine, he used to sing a song. We've let down the bars. We compromise with sin. We let down the bars. The sheep got out. But how did the goats get in? You let down the bars. That's the simple. That's the only thing it is. They can join church today and live any kind of life or anything. But I'll tell you one thing. You can't be born again and live any kind of a life. You'll live for Jesus Christ when you're born again. And you'll act like a man. And you'll conduct yourself as a real Christian if you're born again of the Spirit of God. So this woman, finally, uh, she got to, fell in love with a man, neighbor. And she left her husband and run off and married this man and continued playing the piano in the church. And after a while, she um, left him and married another. And she thought she was doing all right. And then finally ended up as a common law wife. What was it? Her soul told her in the beginning, don't do that. But she reasoned now, if the rest of the women can do this, why can't I do it? But down in her soul was a spirit that said, don't do that. Keep away from that. That's not right. But yet she fought against that and cast that aside, and she went to reasoning. Don't you see? Don't reason. Just believe. Amen. Believe God's Word. Don't try to reason it out. Just what God said is the truth. And believe that to be the truth. Amen. And don't go to your reasoning. Go to your experience. 
to Christ in the heart and compare it with God's Word. Now, she went on, and after a while, she was called, uh, the pastor of our church was called to her bedside to pray for her. Well, she was laying there smoking cigarettes and everything, living in the house of common law wife. And he said, Sister, is everything all right with your soul to die? She said, Everything is at peace. Now, she believed it. She had went so long with her intellects until she had grieved the Holy Spirit from her. It no more spoke to her. She didn't know which was right. She had reasoned it out. She had a, a mental conception that if she went to church and did what was right, why, she would go to heaven. That went on down to the very hour of her death. But when her reasoning power, when you die, your brain breaks up, of course, when the Spirit leaves you. And then what's left? Here's your soul that you've neglected back here, which comes to you then when you're dying. And this mental reasoning breaks up. You don't reason no more. It's your soul that's been in your heart that you've grieved away. Then it caught up with her. And when she did, she screamed, My God, I'm lost! Too late then. The soul that had been grieved away. Now, the doctor can shoot a hypo in the arm and keep you from screaming. Oh, she's excited, said the pastor. She's not lost. Give her a hypo. He gave her a hypo. And she... Sure, quiet her down. Oh, preached her funeral instead of sisters in heaven. That I cannot say. But let me tell you, that high folk can quieten those lips, but it'll never quieten that soul that'll haunt her to eternity. That's right. Don't you let that be your state. You mind God. Be born of the Spirit of God and quit reasoning things and just believe what God said to be the truth. Be filled with God's Spirit. And then... God will lead you and the Holy Spirit will lead you in the paths of righteousness. And you see yourself conducting yourself unlike a Christian. You know it. That's wrong. Then go back and check up with God with His Word here and with His book and get right with God. That's what Simeon did. This old man we're speaking of. He was an old man, 80 years old, had a great standing among the people. An old sage, white beard. And just before the coming of the Lord Jesus the first time, the church had got all formal and indifferent, just about like it has again. And there, Simeon out there, uh, one day the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, Simeon, you're not going to see death before you see the Lord's Christ. And Simeon didn't reason it. He believed it. That's what you want to do. Believe it. Look at the Virgin Mary. When she was overshadowed uh, by the Holy Spirit, what her attitude was. Look at the priest just before him, uh, John the Baptist's father. When he was told in the temple that his wife was going to bear a child after she is old, why, he had plenty of examples. But he reasoned, he said, how can these things be? She's old and so forth, and it can't be. Well, there was Sarah was uh, nearly 100 years old when she conceived. There's Hannah, way past the age. But here Zechariah doubted the Lord. And God said, I'm, the angel said, I'm Gabriel, but my words will be fulfilled just the same. And he struck him dumb till the day the baby was born. But look at Mary. When the Holy Ghost told her, you're going to have a child knowing no man, she didn't reason it. She just took him at his word. There you are. And she went around testifying that she was going to have a baby knowing no man before she was positive of anything. Oh, I hope you see it. She took God at his word. She didn't wait. Excuse this expression. You'd listen to a doctor. I'm your brother. She didn't wait till she felt right. She didn't wait till something taken place that she could see naturally that she was going to be mother. She just took the angel's word. When the angel said, you're going to have this baby knowing no man, she said, behold, the hands made of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And she went around rejoicing that she was going to have the baby before she had one evidence that the baby was coming outside the word of God. God. Oh, sister, do that tonight. You and you and all of you. Take God at His word and start rejoicing. Saying, God said, so that settles it. I'll rejoice anyhow. I don't have to feel nothing or nothing else. I just believe it. Oh, and you'll see an old-fashioned revival sweep this country, burning out sin and every church will fill up. And what a time it will be. If men and women will do that much, take God at His word and be expecting Him to do what He said He would do. You're the children of Abraham. That's only through the promise. 
That promise was given to Abraham. When he was 75 years old, he was living in Shinehire. There come down in the lands, the valleys of Shinehire, rather, come from Babylon with his father and was living down there and, and uh, the city of Ur in the land of Chaldean. And he was 75 years old. His wife was 65. He had lived with her since she was about 17. And she was barren. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Abraham, you're going to have a child by Sarah. And Abraham believed God. And made ready for the birth of the baby. And the baby never come for 25 years. But instead of Abraham getting weaker, he got stronger all the time, giving God praise for the baby. And here he is now 100 years old and Sarah's 90. But every day it went longer, the greater marriage would be. And the Bible said he got stronger and stronger, giving God praise. But the first year passed by, Sarah, how you feel? No difference. Praise God, we're going to have it anyhow. The second month passed. Why do you feel, Sarah? No different. Glory, we're going to have it anyhow. People said, Abraham, there's something wrong with his mind. Was there? No, sir. He took God at his word. Amen. He believed what God said, knowing that he was able to keep that which he had committed to him. God was able to keep his word. The first year passed. Nothing happened. He said, see, I told you. But Abraham said, it'll be here anyhow. When he was 75 years old, when he was 85, it'll be here anyhow. Done bought up the bird on, had the pins and everything ready. Because they knew that he's going to have the baby. God said so. No matter how impossible it looked, God said so. That settled it. Abraham going around testifying, he's going to have the baby anyhow. Come in. 15 years passed, no baby yet. 20 years passed, no baby yet. 25 years passed, no baby yet. What about it, Abraham? We're going to have it anyhow. God said so. Giving glory to God. Oh, if we had some man tonight that could have the faith of Abraham. And you are Abraham's seed when you are dead in Christ. You receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which makes you Abraham's seed and gives you the same faith that Abraham had. It calls those things which are not as though they were. Amen. Amen. No matter how you look, what you feel like is what God said about it. Amen. Amen. You know, I feel religious right now. I really do. Uh, 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 I wasn't expecting this. But to think of God, we call those things, Abraham called those things which was not, as though they were. He didn't look at the natural things. He looked at the unseen. He looked by eyes of faith what God said. And what God said God would keep. He knew he could keep it. So he believed in it and testified of things that he didn't see as though they were already happening. Oh, my. You see it? I hope you do and get it. I'm not excited now. I'm just feeling good. Now, notice. Now, if you can take the same thing and say, God promised that by Jesus Christ's stripes I was healed, I believe it. No matter what takes place, how I feel, how I look, I'm healed anyhow. God said so. And stay right with it. Don't move. Stay right with it. Watch what I do. You know, some people have great big faith like that. They can be healed in a moment. Some has faith that much can be healed in a week. Some has mustard seed faith. Takes them a long time, but just follow it. It's genuine. It'll bring you to the light. Just hold on to it and keep moving. And it, it'll bring you out. You just keep holding on to that faith. It'll bring you through. If it's real mustard seed, you know, mustard don't mix with nothing. It's genuine. You can mix kale with spinach and so forth, but you can't mix mustard with nothing. And when they, mustard stays mustard. And when real faith takes a hold in the heart, it's not intellectual, it's not reason no more, it's real. It's the Spirit of God witnessing through you. God's Word is true. I stay right with it. Yes, sir. And that brings the results. So, we, Simeon, he went along, he was, now he had a great prestige, but he wasn't ashamed of his prestige if it was contrary to the people's ideas. Well, somebody say, look, poor old Simeon, you know what? He's just a little bit off now. You know, here we are, we're in captivity, and look at the churches today, what we know the days of miracles is past. And here that old man with one foot in the grave, 80-something years old, and still saying he's going to see the Christ when even David, hundreds and hundreds, 800 years ago, said he wanted to see him. And, and Elijah back before that, and come on back to Adam, they looked for him. And here he is with one foot in the grave, and the church all tore up like it is now, and everything, and the days of miracles all ceased out and everything. And yet he said, he believed it. Why? God said so. Amen. And he went around. He wasn't ashamed to tell people, I'm not going to die until I see the Lord's Christ. He had a good reason. The Holy Ghost told him so. Uh, now, there's no two Holy Ghosts. The same Holy Ghost was there then, sure now. Amen. That's right. The same Holy Ghost. So he believed the Holy Ghost. 
No more around testifying. He didn't care what people said. He had the promise, so that's all. And have you got the promise? Absolutely. The promise isn't to you and to your children, and that is far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call, the promise is still the same. That's right. To whosoever will, let him come and drink from the waters of fountain of the waters of life freely. For it's for whosoever will. You can. You're, you're invited to come, wanted to, and expected to be here. That's right. When the days draw by, Simeon got older, but he still praised the Lord. He was, go, he, he was going to see the Christ anyhow. So finally, after a while, there was some magis way over the eastern country, saw a star appear. And they packed up and away they went, following the star. They was expecting to see that star. The red, nobody else seen it because no one was expecting it but them. They got what they expected. They was watching for the star where Balaam said, their prophet, that there'll be a star of Jacob rise and they was looking for it. And so they followed the star and found the Christ. And there was a few shepherds out on the hillside herding their sheep. They found him and they knew about it. But word doesn't travel then, didn't travel then to the other like it does today. They didn't have the news, the papers and the radio and and the press and so forth that we got today, they didn't have it. So it only went from lip to ear. And many people had never heard nothing about it. So after eight days, Jesus being born, well then, uh, Mary, she come to the temple to offer the sacrifice, which was a custom after eight days, every male child had to be brought and circumcised, and they had to offer an offering for her purification. That was according to the custom of the law. Let's take a little drama here so the little children can understand. It's Monday morning at the temple. And I see the Virgin Mary coming with her little baby. And she's got a peasant's offering. A peasant's offering with two turtle doves. Now, a rich baby could offer a lamb because they had flocks and herds. But Jesus, they had two turtle doves. And now all the babies coming along in their fine needlework. The mother standing real finely dressed with a little needlework with their babies. You know, little pink and gowns and so forth on them. But there stood the little virgin with a baby wrapped in swaddling's cloth. You know what swaddling's cloth is? It's what goes on the back of the yoke of an ox when you're plowing with them. It's rags. It's wrapped over the, the yoke. And it's hanging in the manger, so they just unwrapped that, Joseph and them did, and wrapped Jesus in it. Think of it. The king of glory. The king of glory. Somebody. Would you think of it? There's about two million Jews that day up in there. So there's perhaps maybe hundreds of babies born every night. So every morning, there'd be after the eight days for each person, there would be a line of babies for their circumcision. It's Monday morning. Here's a great line of mothers standing there over on that side, we'd say, with their little babies. And I can hear some of them say, look at there. See? Look at there. Look at her. There she is. That's the one that had that baby without being married. Mm -hmm. Keep your distance from her. Isn't that just like persecuting the real true believer today. She held that baby in her arms. She didn't care what the people said. She knew whose baby that was. In her heart, she knew that that was God's child. And everyone that's born of the Spirit of God, you might be called fanatic. You might be called that insulting name of holy roller. You might be called anything like that. But in your heart, if you've ever cradled Christ, you don't care what they say. Don't make any difference. They can say, look at him. Sure, you're a mark. Right? She was too. Kept her distance from her. Back, don't get around her. But what was she holding in her arms? It didn't look very nice to look at, but it was a king of kings wrapped in swaddling's cloth in its little virgin mother's arms. Think of it. They kept their distance. I wonder where those people are tonight. What if they could come back and try it over again? It would be different, wouldn't it? Don't let that be your faith. You do it now. While you're sensible and while you can, while you've got a chance to do it, do it now. They kept their distance. So the line moved on up, the babies being circumcised and the mothers offering for their purification. Her bring her little doves along, which probably cost a few farthings, and she brought the doves for the, her purification according to the law. And then gets up nearly way along up the line. Let's look, where's Simeon at? If God gives Simeon a promise... That he was going to see the Christ, it's up to God to take care of it. Don't you think so? Uh, let's say he's out over in a prayer room. That Monday morning, he'd had the services the day before, and he was tired. I see him sitting over there, pick up the scroll, and begin to read, and a virgin shall conceive and bear a child. But isn't that strange? I picked that up. I see him reach down and get another and read, All we like sheep have gone astray. 
the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we were healed. Reading the scriptures over in the place. Now, I say this is drama for a moment. And all at once the Holy Spirit is absolutely obligated. If he give him the promise to see the Christ, and the Christ is in the temple, he's obligated to bring Simeon before the promise. Is that right? Amen. Sure. So I can see the Holy Spirit say, Simeon, stand on your feet. Oh, my. You believe men of God are led by the Spirit of God? Amen. Sure they are. Amen. Simeon stands up, not knowing where he's going. Yes, Lord, I hear your voice. What do you want me to do? Walk, Simeon. Where, Lord? Just walk. Make a difference where you're going. Walk. He started off walking. Here he comes out. Led by the Holy Spirit. They give him the promise. The same Holy Ghost that gives Simeon the promise gave you the promise. Amen. How many believes in divine healing? Well, amen. Why are you here tonight? Because you believe. There's something inside of you that tells you there's divine healing. Is that right? If it wasn't even written in the Bible, it would still be a divine healing. If there's a deep in here calling, there's got to be a deep you respond to it. David said, "It's the noise of thy water spouts, the deep calling to the deep. In other words, I've made it like this many times. Before there was a fin on a fish's back, there had to be a water first for him to swim in there. He wouldn't have no fin. He had to have a water first. Before there's a tree to grow in the earth, there had to be an earth for it to grow in, or there wouldn't be no tree. And here, not long ago, I was reading a paper where a little baby, he, he, the, a little boy, about eight years old it was, eat the racers off his pencils at school, eat his racers up. And he come home and find him eating the pedal off his bicycle. And so they take him down to the doctor, and they take him into the clinic and examine him, and the doctor examined his blood and everything, and he come to find out his little body was wanting sulfur, and sulfur's in rubber. Now look, if there's something in here calling for sulfur... There has to be a sulfur to respond to that call or there wouldn't be no call in here. Amen. You get what I mean? Amen. Something hungering, there's got to be something to respond. When our forefathers, the pilgrims, landed over here on Plymouth Rock, they found the Indians. They were worshiping the sun. They were worshiping images. Why? When I went into the hot and tops of Africa, I found the little mud idols of worship. It's sprinkled in blood. Why? They're human beings. There's something in them that tells them as a creator. Deep calling to the deep. And if there's a deep calling, there's got to be a deep to respond to it. You remember not long ago before you received the Holy Spirit, your heart burned for something. Yeah. What was it? It was a deep. You'd come to the church, you'd join church, but you'd never been born again. And your heart called for it. What was it? The deep calling to the deep. And as sure as there is a deep calling, there is a deep to respond to it. And tonight you're craving divine healing because God's Bible said so. Something in you tells you there's a divine healing. And as sure as there's something in you craving for divine healing, there's a fountain open somewhere. And the same Holy Ghost that gives Simeon the promise and led him to the Christ has led you here tonight. For divine healing where the fountain is open for every one of you? Deep calling to the deep. There's a response. And when you see it, oh, you bathe in it. I love beauty. I watch the sunset. I was riding today around your lake and weeping like a baby. The lady back there and her husband, my book salesman here, Mr. and Mrs. Wood, they said, Brother Branham, what do you see? My mother's a half breed. She's a half Cherokee Indian. And when I looked out there and could see those leaves painted, I said, it's God with his brush. He's painting the scenery. There was something in me to long for. And when I seen it, my heart weeped inside of me. Deep calling to the deep. Oh, what a time to come into his presence where you long to be. And see the resurrected living Jesus among us. Then this deep Calling to the deep brings the results and no wonder people weep. No wonder people shout. No wonder people get emotional. Why, brother, you you can't keep from it. There's something inside of you that's a moving. Simeon, led by the Holy Spirit. Here he comes, not knowing where he's going. Men who walk with God don't care where they're going. 
as long as they're proud of the Holy Spirit. And he walks out into the building. I can see the old sage as he walks around. He, he don't know where he's going, so the Holy Ghost is leading him. I see him go to this line of women. Here he comes down on this line of women, looking at each little baby. He comes to this woman standing by herself that the rest of them is making fun of. He stops. He looks over in her arms. He picks up this little bundle of love, wrapped in swaddling cloth, pulled it up to his bosom, the tears running down his cheeks, and said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. The Holy Spirit moving. He was expecting it. He was expecting to see it. And God led him to his full expectancy. Are you expecting to be healed tonight? If you are, the Holy Ghost has led you to the place now. Are you expecting it? Be ready. At the same time, over in the temple was an old prophetess, a woman, the Virgin Anne. She was blind. She had been blind for years. She was around 80 years old. And she stayed in the temple and prayed day and night. For she too was looking for the consolation of Israel, the coming of the Lord. And there she is in the corner, blind. At the same time, her looking for the coming of Christ and blind and couldn't see him, the Holy Spirit spoke to her and said, Rise up, Anne. And here comes the old blind woman, feeling around the crowds, going through the great host of the temple, till she got right to where he was and lifted up her hands and blessed God. If the Holy Ghost could lead that blind prophetess because she was expecting to see the Lord Jesus when he comes, can he lead you to the fountain of his blessings and grace? Be expecting it. Look forward to it. It's here. God is here. He's moving by his Spirit, moving over all the earth. Signs and wonders. When God moveth, move, O oh Lord, on me. Everywhere God moves, any time through the Bible, you'll see healings, miracles, signs, and wonders. He leaves a track behind him of the supernatural. I don't care what theologians say, the Bible is right. When God moves, the world shakes. And when he moves, at every revival they've ever had in the breaking out of the First Reformation in Luther's days, they had healings in the days of Wesley, they had healings in the days of Calvin Knox, Finney Sankey, all down through it. Today, he's no less than he was then. If anything, he's greater today than he was then. Hallelujah. I'm not excited. I know what I'm speaking of. Letter of the Spirit. Why'd you come here tonight? Did you come to get healed? Let me show you how many thousands of times. Here not long ago, I'd been over to Dallas, Texas, and I started back home, and the airplane got caught in a storm. We had to come down at um, Memphis, Tennessee, and they put me up in that famous hotel there that night, the Peabody Hotel. I couldn't stay in a place like that with my own money. But the a- airplane lines put me in there. And I was staying there that night, and I prayed. And the next morning, what I got up, they told me, said, Now, you be ready, Reverend Bram. They'll pick you up the limousine at 7 o'clock. And they'll say, I said, All right, sir. And about 6.30, I went out. I had some mail I'd wrote that night. I was going to mail it. I was going down the street uh, singing this little song. Uh, I'm people almost everywhere whose hearts are all on flame with the power that fell at Pentecost that cleansed and made them clean. Oh, it's burning now within my heart. Oh, glory to his name. I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them. Go along. I just learning it. I was going down the street and something said, stop a minute. Well, I thought maybe just my thought and it got a reality and I stopped. I thought, what is it? I pulled up in a little corner. There's a policeman standing there just right after the break of day. And this policeman standing there, I looked like I was looking at some fishing reels and guns and things sitting in the window like that. I got back behind a post and I said, oh, Heavenly Father, is that you stop me? He said, turn and go right back the other way you come. I turned and started back down the street like that, wondering where I was going. I walked and I walked, went from over North Memphis on down to the river, on out to the edge of the country. I kept, I thought, where am I going? Something just kept saying, walk on. I just kept walking, walking down. Seven o'clock come, seven thirty, eight o'clock. I just kept on walking, walking around through. I didn't know where I was going, just walking around. The Lord was a leading. And I got out there and got out amongst the colored people. And I happened to come down the street, walking like that. And I seen leaning across a little old whitewashed fence, a typical old Aunt Jemima with a man's shirt pinned around her head. She's leaning across the fence, and big black cheeks looking up that way. When she see me coming, the tears is in her eyes. She said, good morning, Parson. 
at, in the South, they call a preacher Parson. said, good morning, Parson. I said, good morning, Auntie. I said, how did you know I was a Parson? She started grinning. She said, Parson, did you ever hear in the Bible about that woman, the Shunammite woman that couldn't have no children, and she told the Lord if he'd give her a baby that she would raise it for him? She said, yes. She said, I was that kind of woman. And she said, the Lord give me a baby. And she said, I raised him with all my heart to serve the Lord. She said, I washed to make a living. She said, I was a Christian. I've been filled with God's Spirit for years. And she said, and you know, my boy, when he got up to about 18 years old, he took the wrong road. And said he got with a company, and he didn't tell me nothing about it, and he took a horrible disease, and he's in here dying. Said he's been unconscious, Parson, for two days. And said, I, I just couldn't stand to see my baby die, she said, without knowing the Lord. And she said, I know he's took a wrong road, he's got to pay for his sin, but I wanted to hear him say he was saved. And said, he's just awful. And said, I prayed all night long. I said, Lord, please don't let my baby die without being saved. Please don't, dear Lord. I've worked so hard for you and worked for you. And said, so I fell asleep and I dreamed that I seen a man with a light suit on and a light hat coming down the street. He said, you was the man. And she said, I've been standing here since 3 o'clock waiting for you. God's moving. I said, I've been waiting here since 3 o'clock. I patted her on her back and her back was still wet with dew. I said, Auntie, my name is Branham. I said, I pray for the sick. Did you ever hear of me? He said, No, sir, Paulson, I never did hear of you. I said, I'm sorry. She said, Won't you step in? And I walked in, this little old plow corn hanging back there for a gate thing to hold a gate back. And I walked into that little colored haunt there that morning, a little house, whitewashed. And brother, I've been in three king's palaces. I've been in some of the nicest homes in the world. I was raised in a little old shack without a floor in it. But I walked into that little home that morning. I tell you, you know you was in the presence of God. I looked in there, there was no pinups on the walls. There was a great big sign on the wall, God bless our home. I'd rather have it than all your fandangled pinups and things of Hollywood. I looked at that, I thought, what do you know? And in the little old iron poster bed was a great big boy, about 180 pounds, going, mm, mm, mm. I said, what's the matter with him? She said, Parson, he's dying. I took hold of his feet. He's real sticky on his feet, perspiration. Felt like he was dying. And she said, the doctor says he'd never come to. He got in the wrong company. It was venereal disease, syphilitic, and it went four plus and went into his heart and ate his heart out. So said he, the doctor man says he's going to die. And said, he keeps saying he's lost. And uh, I stayed there a little bit. He said, oh, it's so dark out here. So he thinks he's in a boat and he's lost out on the sea. And she started crying and said, Parson, I can't see him die like that. That's my baby. And she reached over and kissed him on the forehead and said, God bless Mama's baby. Oh, I thought, no matter how much disgrace he'd got into, how big and burly he was, he was the mother's heart, still her baby. And I thought, God, if that mother can overlook that and kiss him and sense her baby, how much more are you to us? When you said, a Mother may forget her suffering baby, but I can't forget you. You're engraved on the palms of my hand. I thought, what love. She kissed him and hugged him. And I said, Andy, will you bow for prayer? She got down and you lead, Andy, and you talk about a prayer. Oh, that old godly hold of God. I stood there and wept holding that little bed post. She kissed him again. I said, Andy, will you kneel with me now for me to pray? She said, Yes, Parson. I said, if I can only said, ask to the Lord, if I can only hear him say he's saved before he goes. And I got down and I said, Heavenly Father, I don't know why I'm here. My airplane's been gone for about two hours now. And I said, why you led me down here? I don't know. This is the only place I've come to. So sure, this is where you've led at. I said, I, I was expecting you to lead me somewhere. And she was expecting me to be here. So I, I pray, God, that you'll be merciful and spare the boy's life. I had my hands laying on his feet. He said, Mama? She said, yes, honey. Says it's getting light in the room. And about a minute or two from then, he's sitting up on the side of the bed talking to us. I hurried off and called a cab and went out the airplane that was making the last call. It had been held for two hours. I caught my plane and went home. About six or eight months after that, nearly a year, I was coming to you on a train. And as you look at Memphis, how you pull up this way, I run up to get me a hamburger. There's too much charge too much on a train to eat. So uh, I had to go over and get me a hamburger at the train stop. And I went up there to get me a hamburger and I go up I heard somebody holler, Hello, Pleasant Brandon! I looked out there and there's a red cat. He said, Hello there, big black boy, teeth shining. 
as we go into the service to pray for the sick. May every person now with these words in their heart, may the Holy Ghost come. May Jesus walk into this building just now. May the great pillar of fire that led the children of Israel sway on this pulpit tonight. Come down. Prove the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. That people be without an excuse then. Heal the sick tonight, Father. Make the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, the cripples to walk. Cure the heart trouble, cancers, all different kinds of troubles. God, I pray that you'll mend up the broken homes and, and make the ones that's in homes that's in different fathers and mothers who doesn't pray. Give them an experience tonight that they'll start a family to hold her at their home. Grandfather, bless every church in the city. Oh, God, let every minister be so inspired tomorrow that he'll preach like never before. And may an old-fashioned revival sweep out to this city, Lord, and just uh, make people come from everywhere to Shinaon here that they might know that Jesus lives in the rain. Grant it, God. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. May the Lord bless you all real richly is my sincere prayer. Tomorrow Sunday, you don't go to Sunday school probably too late. You Catholic people probably go to early mass and whatever it is, but you'll be able to make one of them. And I, I hate to hold you and you're standing, but I just felt like talking to you. You're such a lovely audience. And uh, I pray that you'll receive the words now and be expecting to be healed. I want to ask you something just in a moment while we, before we call the prayer line to be prayed for. What would Jesus do if he was here tonight? How many of you believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Do you believe that? What was he yesterday? What did he do when he was here on earth? And what he done when he was here on earth, he's got to do the same thing today if he is the same. Is that right? Now, for about two minutes, let's go through it. What was his ministry? Did he go around and say, bring me somebody and I'll heal him? Never did he say that. He said, I can't do nothing. It's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Is that true? Yeah. Jesus saw visions. When he seen Philip and sent, and Philip, he prayed for Philip. Peter come to him. He knew what his name was. He told him who he was. And Philip went and got Nathaniel around in another country and brought him over. When he come up to Jesus, Jesus said, There's a righteous man, behold, an Israelite in whom there's no doubt. He said, When did you know me? How do you know who I am? Well, he said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree out there praying, I saw you. He said, You're the Son of God. And he said, Because I told you that, that I saw you in the tree, do you believe me? He said, Yes. He said, Then you can see greater than this. He told the woman at the well after talking to her what her sins was and what she had done and, and so forth. He went into the pool of Bethesda where great multitudes of lame, halt, blind, withered was laying there at St. John 5. And he, he, a couple days before that, a woman touched his garment and went and stood off out in the audience. Jesus looked around over the audience. He said, she, he said, somebody touched me. Well, he said, everybody's touched me. He said, yes, but I got weak. Virtue went from me. I got weak. He said... Well, looked around over the audience. He said, seeing the little woman, he picked her out where she's at. He said, thy faith is healed, that blood issue now. Your faith done. Now, your faith pulls from the gift of God, just like he was a great gift of God. This gift here is just a small amateur gift, but it's of God just the same. So your faith operates it, not mine. Yours is the one who does it. It wasn't Jesus' faith to heal that woman. He said, thy faith has saved thee. Thy faith did it. Her faith operated the gift of God that was in him. Now, when he went through that pool, look at all. We believe he was loving. Don't you believe so? Full of compassion. But when he went through that, see, people don't know what passion means. Many times they don't know what love means. There's two different kinds of love spoke of in the Bible. You know that? In the Greek word, you scholars, one of them is called a filio. The other is called a gapa. A filio is earthly love. We have one for another. Now that would, uh, you love your wife, but the love that you have for her would, uh, if another man uh, insulted her, you'd kill the man for her. See? Because that's a filial love. But a gospel love is divine love. That same love would make you pray for that man's soul that insulted your wife. 
It's altogether different. The same thing is compassion. Wish we had a little time longer, a few days to talk to you and, and speak to you on those things. And then he went through there full of compassion, and he passed by those lame, halt, withered, moved out on through until he found a man laying on a pallet, a little quilt on the floor, a little bed. And he had a prostate trouble or something. He was retarded. had 38 years. Wasn't going to kill him. He could walk like other men. But he said, Will thou be made holy? So oh, somebody can beat me. Can outrun me and get into the pool because there's many thousands waiting for that angel to come down and move that water. And the first one got healed. The virtue of the angel went off. Just tucked it all off the water. And so he said, No man to put me in water. When I'm coming, somebody steps ahead of me. He said, Take up thy bed and go into the house. Now watch. Jesus knew that he was laying there. And knew that he had been in this condition. Is that what the Bible said? Amen. Jesus knew. Then the Jews questioned him. St. John 5, 19, I am now. Listen to what Jesus said. No wonder the Jews probably said, like we would tonight, go heal that one and I'll believe it. That's the same thing Satan said. Turn this stone into, into bread. Come down off the cross and we'll believe you. Perform a miracle before me and let me see it. God never did or never will do that. No, sir. He doesn't do it that way. And, and so these, uh, these Jews said, well, I wonder why he didn't heal the rest of them and so forth. There's thousands. I know old brother Jones down there, John Doe and all them. They're good members of our church. And there they are being crippled all these years. If he's a healer, let him go heal lamb. The same thing said today. Yeah. But God didn't do it that way. He went to a man that only had a prostate trouble or something he had 38 years and healed him and walked away. So they questioned him. They do the same thing today. Now listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, Very, very, that word very is absolutely, absolutely. I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. But what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. St. John 5, 19, is that right? Yeah. Then Jesus' own word said that he did not perform any miracle or do anything until the Father showed him by vision first to do what to do? Then he went and done what the Father showed him. Now Jesus said, These things that I do shall you also. Is that right? Yes. More than this shall you do, for I go unto my Father. He said, A little while, and the world, not, not world, is cosmic, the world order, the world unbeliever, the world will see me no more. The world won't see me anymore after I'm crucified. They won't see me anymore. No Yet ye shall see me, the believer, for I, personal pronoun, I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Amen. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did yesterday, he stood in the audience, what the Father showed him to do, he did it. He spoke. He, he could, the Jesus said that he knew their thoughts. Jesus perceived their thoughts. Is that scripture? Amen. Told. Why are you using that? Your faith has healed you. Thy faith has made blind Bartimaeus their whole. All these things like that. And when the people brought to him, he did just as the Father showed him. Now, if he's raised from the dead, he'll do the same tonight. Is that right? Yeah. That's, if he will do it, will you believe him and love him? Once more, let's pray. Father, now in the name of the Lord Jesus, after the resurrection, the office and his friend went walking down to a city. And on the road down there, a stranger stepped out and began to talk to him. They talked all day long, and he explained the scriptures to them. They didn't know it was him. And when they drew near to the city, he made as if he would go on. But they bid him to come in and abide with them. And when once in the house and the door shut behind him, he did something. It was different from what an ordinary man does. He did it his way, and the people knew that it was him. And oh, how they run from Emmaus all the way back up to Jerusalem to tell him the Lord has risen indeed, and we see. Jesus, will you tonight come in this meeting and do something different than what's done in religious meetings? Do it your way, Lord, the way you did it when you were here on earth, that the people might know that she's raised from the dead. You just didn't only raise on that Easter. You've been risen ever since. And you'll always be alive. You're alive forever, more. Oh, Christ, please, in in your holy name, I ask that you'll pardon all of our sins. Take all of our iniquity away from us. 
And Father, forgive thy servant of my misdoings and sanctify us tonight with thy Holy Spirit and come, Lord, into the body of this unworthy person that's speaking to you and use it as a mouthpiece as you have promised to do and use the ears out there, circumcise the heart and the ears out there to hear your word and all together may we be in the Spirit expecting and may you fill this room with the Holy Spirit and heal every sick person in here, save every sinner and may it be to the glory of God. We commend our, commit ourselves into thee for this service in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Should you give prayer cards out of the church today? Yeah. Look on the back of it. It's got my back with you. Just now take yourself, any of the out there, and put you here before this woman with about at least 1,500 or 1,600 people sitting here tonight looking right down and Satan moving around trying to make one flaw if he can. Put yourself here in my position now. This challenge to the audience, to you people out there, to believe and watch the Holy Spirit move out tell you about it and heal. See, it looks simple, but come try it. Then you know where, what I mean. I, I'm expecting you Christians to be in prayer for me, to pray for me. It's our Lord that we're speaking of. Those tonight who held up their hands accepting Jesus, certainly, maybe 30 or 40 of them did. But look, friend, they couldn't have held up their hands lest God called them. Jesus said, no man can come to me except the Father calls him first. And all that comes, I'll give him everlasting life. Now, they're babies just beginning. Now, they want to know who this Christ is that they accept it. They've heard of Buddha, they've heard of idols, they've heard of other religions, and so forth outside of Christianity. But who's this that they've just accepted Christ? They did it by faith. Now, I said he raised from the dead. He's not a dead one, God. Muhammad, Buddha, and all the rest of them have been dead for thousands of years. But Jesus raised from the dead. And he's alive tonight. That's the only thing can prove it. Now, here we are, just a little handful of people. But the resurrected Jesus Christ who represents Christianity is here tonight to prove that our, our, all of you Christians, you're on the right side. Absolutely. You can't fail. You're in Christ. Now, to, if the woman, she may be sick. She may have afflictions. She may have troubles in her heart. She may not even be standing for herself. Maybe somebody else she's here for. She may be, she's got financial troubles. Maybe she's got a children somewhere that she's going to pray for. I don't know. I can't tell you. There's only one who does know, and that's God. But it's the same thing like the woman at the well. Jesus talked to the woman at the well, so the first thing he began to speak to her, then he actually carried a conversation with her. He said to her, Go get your husband. She said, I have none. So that's right, you got five. Well, she said, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Now, I know when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. St. John 4. He'll tell us these things, but who are you? What was the sign of the Messiah? What was the sign? He'll know the secrets of your heart. Is that right? The sign of the Messiah. said, I know, we know, we Samaritans know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll do these things, but who are you? You must be a prophet. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. And she went to the city and said, come see a man. That's right. That's right. You go tell the same thing tomorrow. Come see a man at church in the morning. Hey, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who knows all the secrets of your heart. Now this woman, believing her to be a righteous woman, and now she is a Christian, or a dumb and told me, if God will tell me what she's here for, just like he did the woman at the well, like he did all through the Bible, will you believe then that Jesus really has risen from the dead and sure tonight? Will you do it? Will you just raise your hand and say, I'll do it. If I know, if they can be proven to me, they'll take all the skeptic out of my mind. Now may the Lord grant it. I just want to talk to the lady just a moment. And then that's going to be up to you, whatever you think about it. Now you have to know it's supernatural. I'm sad to say some of you don't believe it, but it's so anyhow. See. You can't hide yourself now. See, he's done anointed me now. See. That's right. But you'll see that it's, your attitude towards it will determine your destination. That's right. Now, sister, as a turn to you knowing that you are a Christian, as soon as the Holy Spirit 
just a few moments ago, I want to ask you something. There was a strange feeling come to you. They're just kind of like a sacred feeling. Isn't that right? Even to bring tears to your eyes. That's right. That's when the anointing struck me. The angel of God you see on the paper. That's he's here now. That's what you feel right now. Such a sweet feeling. No one, oh, if you could just only feel this wonderful heavenly atmosphere. It's his presence. Now, you all seen that angel on the picture? Almighty God who will judge me at the day of judgment knows that that angel is right here now. You looking this way, looking right straight towards you. Not me, him. I can just feel it moving in the audience everywhere. Now, if I can talk to the lady just a moment. Now, sister, being a stranger to you, never seen you in my life, then if God will let me know what you come here for and will tell me something that you know that I don't know nothing about, you'll know it has to come through supernatural power. But will you believe it's the Lord Jesus and will accept whatever you're after as He gives it to you and will believe Him? And I've represented Him right. Now, I've been speaking about Him and telling what He is. Now, it's Him to reveal to me. Isn't that right? Now, if the audience can hear me, which I know not how loud my voice is, the lady is moving away from me. And I see her. She's at some kind of a place. It's a, a, a doctor's office or a hospital. She's being having an operation. And it's on her hand. It's her right hand and her middle finger. And she's got, the doctor says there, I believe it says it's a malignancy. And he operated, but it didn't do it any good. And it's moving again. And the woman is also suffering. I see her where she's changing her garments. And she's suffering with something in her leg. It's a varicose vein that she's rubbing, which cramps her in her leg. Those things are true, are they, lady? If they are, raise up your hand. Do you believe? Now, I do not know what I said to the woman. That wasn't me talking. That was that angel you see on that picture. Now, whatever he said, test it and see if it's truth or not. Now, if that anointing is here, and I'd lay my hands on the woman when the last words that ever come from Jesus' mouth... He said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth in his baptized shall be saved. These signs shall follow them that believe. The last thing he said, If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Then whatever it is, I pray for sister while you pray too. Would you come to us? Heavenly Father, Thou knowest this person, and I ask that you heal her and make her well, or give her the desire of her heart, and may she live long. And may her testimony stir the neighborhood where she lives. This blessing I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you now, sister. Go John not but believing with all your heart that Jesus gives you the victory. Praise the Lord. He is great. Marvelous. He cannot fail. For he is the Lord God. A man. How we love him and praise him. Lady sitting right back there, right back to the end of the row there. He's got heart trouble. Sitting there looking at me he like that. Don't fear. Your face saved you just then. You believe with all your heart? Do you? If you do, you may have your healing. Thank you. Here, as you might know, just about two rows in front of you, second, second in, arthritis. If you believe that Jesus Christ make you well, you may have what you ask for. Amen. Little lady clapping her hands here, right here in front, has been having a flutter now. When she lays down, especially at night time after she eats. That's right. Isn't that right, sister? Put your hand up to your mouth like that. 
Isn't that yeah. true? Right there, there's a little shawl around your shoulder. When you lay down, you smother. You think it's heart trouble, but it isn't. It's indigestion. You're eating and it pushes through the tube up and makes your heart flutter. You won't have that no more. Your faith has made you well. You don't have a prayer card, do you? You don't need one, you see. You just have faith. Now the man before me, isn't Jesus the same? What happened? The woman's faith, she was praying. It touched Jesus. Not me. But we're his, our lips is the only lips he's got on earth. Our hands is the only hands he's got. I'll be with you even in you. Manifesting yourself to the world. Things that I do shall you also. Just using our lips to speak. What is it, Brother Branham? It's yielding to the Holy Spirit. That's all yielding. Find out what he wants to use you for and then yield to him. If it's to go talk to somebody, yield yourself and go talk. Believe. Now the man standing here. Good evening, Dad. We're strangers to each other, aren't we, brother? I had never seen you in my life. Now I'd imagine if my father was living tonight, he'd be about your age. He was kind of a man about your size. There, I'd give the world tonight if he was standing where you are. Well, I'll never see him no more on this earth. He's gone on. But God rest his soul and his gallant soul in peace. But Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead. Now, you know, I know nothing of you, Dad. I just, I'm just a man standing here. Probably you're old enough to be my father. And I, I never seen you, never met you. Only God alone knows anything about you. That, that is true, isn't it? But Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, knows all about you, doesn't he? He certainly does. Certainly. Now, this man, if the audience can hear me, I don't know how loud I speak. But I'm somewhere else. I know I'm on a platform, but I'm also standing at a hospital. The man has been operated on. It was for a a hernia. And he had two operations. And one of them hurt him real bad, and that was the first one. The second one wasn't so bad. And you're a married man, your wife. She's here, and she's got trouble with her leg. And you got a boy. And the boy's a middle-aged man. And he's had polio. And he's got crippled hands. And he's here with you tonight. Those things are true. Do you believe? Oh God, my Savior, I pray that you'll give this, my brother, the deep desire of his heart. Whatever it is, Lord, that he has need of, I pray in Jesus' name as I hug this dear old brother to my bosom. May you give him his desire. Amen. God bless you, my dear brother. Receive what you come for. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. All right. Brother Woods, if you would come here and stand by me, if you will, for a few minutes to kind of help, if you would. Are you believing with all your heart? Just have faith. Oh, how wonderful. Praise be to God. Sir, do you believe God can heal you of that trouble with your knees sitting there praying? Sitting right back here about about seven rows back, six or seven right here, sitting on the front. Got trouble with the knees. Do you believe God? Right in. Lay your hand back. You, sir, there with a red shirt on, turn around and lay your hand on that lady laying here standing right behind you. Right behind you. Right back behind you. You looking at me so earnestly. Sitting right behind you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll grant this blessing to the person that I'm asking for, for your glory. Amen. Wouldn't hurt you, sir. I'll show you something that you might not know. 
to the lady that had the trouble with your knee, lay your hand on the lady next to you because she's suffering with a gallbladder trouble. That's right, isn't it, lady? If it is, raise up your hand. All right. Now, lady, you lay your hand over on her. Now, in Jesus' name, may it never bother you again. That you might know, too, the lady sitting next to you has a neck trouble, back trouble. That's right, isn't it, lady? That's right, raise up your hand. Amen. He's here. Jesus is raised from the dead. He's alive among you. I challenge your faith to look and live. Believe with all your heart. You can have what you ask for. How do you do, sir? We're strangers to each other, I suppose, sir. I don't know you, but God does know you, doesn't he? He said to me the night that he met me that I was called to pray for sick people. That's why that light come when I was only three minutes old. And I told him people wouldn't believe me. He said as Moses was given signs to prove that he was sent from God to deliver the children of Israel, you'll be given signs too. He said you'll tell them the very thought that's in their heart. And by this they will believe. You believe that? Me being a stranger to you, not knowing you, but God does know you. And if he will reveal to me the secret of your heart or the desire of your heart, then you will accept what you come for? Will the audience do the same thing? God bless you, brother. Now the man moves from me, if the audience can hear me. The man is here for somebody else. It's his wife. And she's in a hospital. And there's something that got bandages wrapped around her leg. And she's got some kind of a breaking out all over. And you've come tonight to stand for her. And that you might know that I be God's servant, his prophet. You suffer also. And it's a stomach condition. Your stomach burns all the time. It's because you're so nervous and weary. It's an ulcer in the bottom pit of your stomach. Sometimes when you belch, you get keeps us sensitive like that with sour belches. And then you've got a stopped up tubes up in here in your passage. That's the truth, isn't it? Do you believe you're going to go home and find what you've asked for? Then go and receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. If you only believe, you'll see the lame walking in a few minutes. The blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the dumb speaking. Watch just a moment. They're in here. Just wait till faith gets that place. I'm expecting it. How do you do, sir? We're strangers to each other, sir. I, I don't know you. But God does know you, doesn't he? I try to be just reverent. Something happened, man. I did, didn't get to see where it was at. Somebody was healed. It got real weak, and I seen the, that light coming over the audience, but I couldn't see where it was at. Don't move around. Be real reverent. I believe it was in the balcony above me. But I couldn't tell just where it come from that direction. Now, we're, we're before God. We're in the presence of God. Be real reverent. Just believe with all your heart. Uh, it makes me awfully weak, so do pray in your heart. Now, this man, here stands a man here I've never seen. He's here for some purpose, I don't know. I wish I could heal him. Wish I could, but I can. Nobody else can. It takes God. He has to have faith in God. Um, by a gift that God gives me, maybe I can cause his faith to rise up to where he will believe. <laughs> you
you are you believe him, sir? What's your trouble? Is you've got tumors. The tumors is in your shoulder. That is right. Now, being that your coat swelled out, with your, that that the public might think that I was looking at that. You believe me to be God's prophet. Look to me and just don't think of nothing. Just look to me and, and think of Jesus and say, Jesus, I believe you. So that the public will see that it won't be that. Maybe He'll show me something else. Yes. I see something else. You got a wife in trouble. She's with you. And she's suffering with something wrong with her leg. It's her left leg. And it's wrapped up in bandages right now. That's right, isn't it? Don't fear, sister. Now go receive what you've asked for. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may it be. That you might know something else. That trouble will reason her legs is ulcers. That's right, isn't it? That's what the doctor said. I heard him when he said it. Have faith now. Don't disbelieve. Believe with all your heart. I have faith, everyone. There's somebody sitting right in here that just this wonderfully having faith. I hope you get healed, ever who it is. It's coming from everywhere. How do you do, lady? Uh, we're strangers to each other. I've never seen you, I suppose. We're strangers to one another. You know me. You don't know me. Oh, I, I didn't think I'd ever seen you. Sometimes I uh, see people and never, yes, they sit in the audience, you know, but I don't know what you're here for. I don't know nothing about you. You know that. But Jesus does. If God will reveal to me what you want, will you believe that He's here to give it to you? Will it settle it with you forever? Will you accept it? Now, don't be scared. You're warding off that anointing. See, that's the only thing that can help you. Wasn't there a man here just a few minutes ago had something on his shoulder? Was prayed for? Some man? Is that him? Oh, yes. That's right. I just seen you pass the platform again just a few moments ago. Seemed like you come from somewhere, a place called Indigo or something other like that. Is that where you live? Oh, I seen you leave the city. I, I couldn't tell you it was still here before me. Don't worry. Have faith. It's all light around you now. Just have faith. That was the interruption. Now you're here because you're nervous. And that's the reason you act the way you do. is because you're nervous and you're suffering from a shock. Isn't that right? A shock. And I see you, you was in an automobile accident that caused a shock that's brought this on to you. And you're not from this city, neither you're from this state, you're from Michigan. And you come from a place called Crystal Falls or something other on, on that order away from here. That's right. You want to go home and be well? Then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe you're in His presence right now. Do you do it? This man sitting behind you come with you. Do you believe with all your heart you can be made well? Do you believe it? Come here. Oh God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, thy Son, take away the curse and may our sister be made completely whole. I ask in Jesus Christ's name with my hands of honor. Amen. So it's quiet now. You feel all right now? Yes. Now, if that's right, tell the audience. You feel all right? I feel all right. Jesus. <clears throat> Makes you well. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. See? Are you German? No. Uh, Spanish? Finnish. 
Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Have faith in God. Now, while you were sitting there, and I turned and said what I did, do you believe me to be his prophet? Then go eat your supper. Your stomach trouble will go away from you. It won't bother you no more. You believe that? Then go do as I tell you. Quit worrying. You're a deep thinker. You're always taking other people's troubles to yourself and crossing bridges before you get to it. You're always planning something that never happens. Quit thinking like that. Be happy and rejoice. It's a peptic ulcer. Can't help it. Makes your food sour and everything else in your stomach and cranks you. It won't hurt you no more. Go on, eat, and be happy and rejoice and serve Jesus Christ. God bless you. Brother, coming with you comes a black spirit, which is death. It's a devil. Cancer. There's a lady sitting there also with cancer. Cancer on the pelvis bone. Is that right? I see you. You're, you are, I hear somebody, your name is, you're Miss Roy Zeitz or something like that. Isn't that right? Wave your hand. That's right. Now, the devil pulling between you, it's off of both of you now. It's light between you now. Go believing with all your heart. The devil calls one to another. They're screaming and calling one for help. And that's the reason I call for your prayer. Pray for me. Help. Keep praying, you see. It's a power. It's a battle. The devil's fighting wrong, fighting against right. Right against wrong. Quit being skeptic. Believe with all your heart. Be expecting you to be next. The Holy Spirit's healing all through the building. Be expecting to be next. Now, what the outcome of that is, I know not. I know the thing left him. There was a dark streak between them, and this one was calling for mercy. Help, help, help. Keep him from believing. Keep him from believing. I looked down to see where it was, and I seen the woman. I seen another woman calling her, and called, I don't know what it was, called something or another. I couldn't make it out just right, and that dark streak all left them. And it turned light, and the Holy Spirit was moving between them. The, the life of it left. Have faith. And sister, God would cure you of that diabetes and make you well if you'd believe it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Then in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may it be so. Amen. Have faith in God now. Come, sister. Look this way now to live. Look and believe on the Lord Jesus with all your heart. Now, you're suffering from a mental oppression, which is nervousness. You keep having strange and crazy thoughts running through your mind. Especially right late in the evening, you get real weak. Many times you have to sit down, and when the sun's setting, you get a gloomy spell comes on you. And the devil's trying to tell you you're going to lose your mind. Those things are true, lady. You were praying before you come. You prayed and said, if God, if you'll give me a prayer card and put me before the... A platform, I'll believe you'll, be, you'll heal me. That is right. That, if that's right, raise your hand. That's right. I see you where you were kneeling there. Now God has rewarded you, and your faith has healed you. It's gone from you. It was caused from menopause, but you're going to be well. So go on your road rejoicing, and I bless you, my sister, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let's say thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sister, if you'd stand there and believe that God will heal you through the heart trouble, you'd go right back down the steps and be made well. Do you believe that? Yes. Then turn and go right back down the steps and be whole. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Do you believe? Now, don't be scared about hallelujah. The word hallelujah means praise our God. Now, everybody bow your head. Here's a blind woman. Blind spirit. And you're going to be 
God, my Yolo, Katerina, I hope it begins to be Our Heavenly Father, knowing what it is, see a blind person on the street, a little white cane, and the lady said practically all of her life she's been like this. Thou can make her see. Thou hast power. The one who healed blind Bartimaeus that day has raised from the dead. They said when the blind spirit went away from the man, he could see. Will you, by the name of your Holy Son, Jesus, make the blind spirit leave our sister? And as your servant, I'll lay hands up on her and rebuke this blind spirit. You evil thing that would shut the sight of this woman off, cause her to walk before a vehicle somewhere and be killed and send her to a premature grave. Come out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I adjure thee to leave the woman. I want every person to keep their head bowed to I ask you to raise your head, please. Keep your head bowed, your eyes closed, please. Raise your head a minute. Watch this. If you can see, touch my nose, lady, with your finger. Take your hand, touch my nose. How many fingers do I have up? Five. How many have now? One. Let's say praise be to God. Now walk her along with that Don't lead her. Let her know herself. Let's say praise the Lord. Everybody, been Our Heavenly Father, we raise our hands to Thee to give praise and glory to Thee, O Lord, who killed and drove away the cataracts out of the woman's eyes. O Jesus, Son of God, we worship Thee for Thy goodness and praise Thee for all Thou hast done. In Jesus Christ's name, we praise Thee. Amen. Look at the lady going on shaking hands with the people. What was it? Cataract. What is a cataract? Let me take a moment, just a moment. Give me your attention. What is a tumor? What's a cancer? It's a devil. Look here. Where did you come from? From one little germ. If I tear your body down, you go down to one germ. Where did that germ come from? Your father. What's beyond that germ is a teeny little cell. You can only see it with your with high-powered glass. What's beyond that little cell is life. Where did that life come from? God. What's a cancer? There's a life. Look, there's no cancer on my hand. There might be sometime. What does cancer come from? Everything in the natural represents the spiritual. A cancer would be a, a scavenger, buzzard, eats dead things. A cancer comes from a bruise. And then when that bruise comes, there's a, a little cell in there that's bruised that backslides. A life, another life, not your life, a germ comes in there. It's a spirit first that develops the self around it by a germ or takes a germ that's already in your body and takes its place. Satan cannot create. He can only pervert what God has created. So he comes into that little germ. And what does he do? He begins to build cells, grows. A cataract does the same thing. Now, it gets bigger. What's it to do? Your little germ is to make you live. That germ is to suck the blood from you to kill you. Tuberculosis, everything else, it's devils, lie. It's, it's malignancy, it's growing, it's gross. Now look here, the cataract in that woman's eyes, blind. What happened? Now, there's, I'm not dealing with that growth. I'm dealing with the life in that growth. Just like here. What if there was a transparent band around my hand? Shutting off the circulation. The doctor, only thing he can operate is what he can see or what he can feel. He can neither see or feel that. 
He said, well, just like on the sight, you went blind. What made you go blind? Well, the optical nerve died. Well, what killed it? You went deaf. What did it? What made you go deaf? Well, the nerve in your ear died. What killed it? Your nerves didn't die all over. Well, now, the doctor says the nerve died. What does the Bible say? The Bible said it's a spirit. When the deaf spirit come out of the man, deaf spirit, he could hear. When the blind spirit left the man, he could see the blind spirit. So that cataract in the woman's eyes, what happened? It was just like that transparent band. It was growing a growth and shutting off the sight. All right, what happened? Now, as soon as this transparent band, now don't kill it back this way, it kills it up that way. That's the reason when you go blind, you don't, your nerves don't die all over your body. When you go deaf from the nerve, it don't die all over the body. It just dies there. What is it? It's a supernatural force that shuts it off. Now, if that's released immediately, it'll hurt a little, but the circulation will start back. Anything that interrupts nature is the devil. God intends you to be healthy and strong, but the devil comes and interrupts what God has did. You see what I mean? Now, that cataract had grown a body, going over her eyes, eating and living from the mucus from her eye. Now, I wasn't dealing nothing with the, with the growth. The doctor might look in there. The growth's still there. But what happened? I call the spirit, the life in the growth. What happens? Out goes the life. Anyone knows... Any hunters in here that hunts deers? Let's see your hand. Got a lot of brethren in heaven. Huh? Notice, you kill a deer tonight and tell the boys how much it weighs. Be careful in the morning. It'll be pounds lighter. Is that right? Sure, it'll shrink. Let it lay there a few days and it'll be pounds heavier. Is that right? Let a little dog get run over on the street. Or an undertaker in here. Watch it tomorrow. It'll, it'll, you'll, you'll, the body, if a person dies and got a false eye, false teeth, they'll take it out. Why? It'll push out. The body will shrink. And let it lay there, it starts rottening, decaying, cells breaking down. After 72 hours, it starts pushing up. Now, what happens? Now, when this spirit of that cataract went out of the woman's eyes, now she can see. She'll see better. Tomorrow it'll be better. Next day it'll be better. Then it'll go getting bad again. Getting bad. What's the matter? The things are swelling. What was the cancer? The cancer said, the pain's gone. Oh, I feel so much better. The tumor, oh my, I feel so much better. Why? It's dead. It's shrinking. Watch out. It'll do that for 72 hours. After 72 hours, you start getting sick. Mm. Right then is where the danger line comes. You'll say, oh, I lost my healing. No. That's the best sign in the world. You got your healing. The thing is dead. It's a piece of rotten flesh there. And a certain, the bloodstream's got to pack off the impurities of the body. And it picks that up and causes fever. Or even a, a bad tooth will cause you to have a fever. Any infection. What about a strip of meat that long like a cancer or that big around that's dead laying in your body? See? Don't doubt. Believe. If it's anchored up here, you'll reason it out and say, well, I guess I lost it. But if it's down here, all devils in hell can't make you doubt it. you believe it anyhow. Because something took place. Not intellectually, but revelation. That's where Jesus built his church. Everybody's in it is built on the same thing. I say, who does man say, I, the son of man, am? Some say, well, you're Moses, or you're Elisha, or you're the prophets. Or... said, who do you say? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Look, the Catholic says that it was built upon Peter. The Protestant said it was built upon Christ. Neither one. Jesus didn't say that. He said, blessed art thou, Simon and Virgona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed it. And upon this rock... I'll build my church. The spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ. Upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A spiritual revealed truth of Jesus Christ. Wonderful. Dad, or he's hard taking insulin, won't get over that diabetes, won't to be well. You believe it, he heals you? And just going off the platform, serving him with all your Let's say praise the Lord, if you can believe. Have faith in God. Heart trouble and everything else flees when Jesus gets a hold. Isn't that right, Dad? You believe He makes you well now? Go on your road rejoicing. That's the way to do it. Amen. Believe Him that He does it. Say it's true, it's powerful, it's God. It can't fail. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may it leave our brother. Amen. Hallelujah. If I told you he was healed sitting there in a chair, would you believe it?
then go rejoicing for you are healed. Jesus Christ has made you well. Now here comes a blind woman again. By your heads everywhere. Have faith in God. Sister, if I was able, my poor sister, hair green, wrinkled hands, no doubt you've done many hard days' work. Standing here blind, I seen him leading you up the steps and leading you out when I called your number. I seen him leading you up here blind. But you can be led by the Master's hand if you can believe. I can only pray. It's been a long time, hasn't it, sister? And a walk around in blackness and darkness is horrible. The setting a world all to yourself in a world of blackness and darkness. May Jesus give you sight tonight, sister. I'll ask every man, woman, boy, and girl in here to keep your head bowed and pray with me in Jesus Christ's name. Now remember, we are dealing with blind spirits. When they come out of one, they try to go to another. So just that you might know, keep your head bowed until you're asked to look up. Or it might be a few days from now, you might not have sight. Wait till you hear me say, raise your head. Because when you look, the eyes is the gate to the soul. You say, Brother Branham, that's psychology. If it is, Jesus used it. He took a blind man and led him away from the crowd and took him outside the city and prayed for him. Get him away from the crowd. And I prayed. When he went to raise Jairus' daughter, he put everybody out of the house. He's still Jesus tonight. Whether the woman will be able to see, I don't know. She's standing here totally blind in darkness. Now have faith in God and believe while I pray for her. Please. Now, sister, I keep your head bowed and let the lids over your blind eyes be closed while I ask our Lord Jesus. Believe that he's going to break forth and shrink up these demons in here that you'll be able to see. Oh, Father, dear, as I stand by a blind woman, one set along the highway begging, and Jesus came. Oh, come near, Lord. There might have been many there that had faith. I don't know. I wasn't there, Lord. But I know you met, give Barnabas his sight. When he's seen, he can see. I believe he tried to follow you. This poor old mother standing here. She's blind, Lord. You know her. I'm just a man. I've tried to represent you. Push back the blackness for her, will you, Lord? Break forth sight in these blinded eyes. We don't ask for miracles, Lord, but just something to encourage her that would make her know that you're the Son of God. And I'll be your servant, Lord, to tell him the truth. I believe if you'd do it, Lord, everyone in here would accept you right then. Please do. Now, will you hear my prayer as I ask you with all my heart in Jesus' name? Now, Satan, this duel of faith, you claim her, and I claim her for Jesus. I claim that you have no power over her. I claim that you have no power over nothing. Jesus Christ, my Lord, stripped and robbed you of everything you had and every legal rights at Calvary. I stand here as his representative, and you know he's on the platform. You know all about this gift. You know about where he ministered and how he did it. And I charge thee by the living God that you come out of the woman. Leave her in Jesus Christ's name. Every head bow. Let me see your eyes first. I'll call you if something happens. I just raise your hand. Can you see me? Put your hands on my face. Amen. Open your eyes. The woman can see. She's got her sight. Jesus Christ, 
I adjure thee to leave every person here and go into the 